So I said I would say what um, reduced Rational on form really is, and it's the following. So the first non-zero in any row, in a row, or oh, in a row is, is one, right? All entries <coughs> above and below are leading one. That is a one at the first one zero in a row are zero. So all entries above and below one of these ones are zero in that column. <coughs> The leading one, okay, in a row is in a column to the right. Of any leading one in a row above. Right of any leading one okay in a row above okay and finally any all zero rows okay come below uh, non-zero rows. Okay. Okay, so I just have in my mind these rules sound a little complicated, but they're sufficient. Um, here's a matrix in reduced row echelon form. So if we have a one there, then we have to have zeros in the same column below it. And then if we have one there, then we have to have zeros in the same column above and below it. And then we might have another number here. So I put minus 27. 27 was obviously my favorite number that day. Okay. And then I put 15 up here. So that was my second favorite number that day. Okay. And then we might have a zero here and a zero here. And then if we have a one there, so you see the ones are moving to the right. They'll be moving to the right. Then I have to have zeros in that column. Okay. And then I might have something like four, five, six. I was running out of inspiration for numbers. And a zero at the bottom here. And we might have something like seven, eight, nine. So the value of the numbers I've put in this matrix, apart from the ones which are one, are clearly completely arbitrary. This is just an example that satisfies these rules above. Okay. You go along any row, the first thing you hit is a 1. If you have a 1 in the leading row, then above and below it are zeros. Mm -hmm. And if you have a 1 in this row, then it must be to the right of the 1 in this row. And any all zero rows come right at the bottom. This is a reduced row echelon form. Okay. So this will be useful um, on the problem sheet, but it'll also be useful a little bit later when we come to do other things. Okay. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about, to start with, about matrix algebra. Okay. So we've seen yesterday that we have matrices. So here's a matrix. Let's give it a name, A. And it has entries. And I'm going to have an entry A11 one, one as the first entry. And A12. 
as the first, second entry in the first row, and so on. And then this goes up to A1, and I've called it N. Okay. And then the next row will be A21, and A22, and so on up to A2N. Some people put commas between these indices. I'm not doing so. This is not A12. This is A sub 1 of 2. Right? And then the last row in my matrix here will be AM1 and AM2 and up to AM. <coughs> well, I can't really put that one in. That's not really fair. Okay, so here is a matrix. So if A i j is a real number, okay? This is a real M by N matrix. Okay? In other words, it has M rows and N columns. The first index is sort of the row index, and the second index is the column index, right? Okay. Okay. So we say that A belongs to Rm cross N. So that's the notation that I would use. So sometimes you'll also see um, A in M, M, N, which I like less. <coughs> but that notation you'll see means exactly the same as this notation, which I think is a little bit more descriptive. Okay. So note that um, R, M cross 1, okay, these are column vectors. Okay. These are column vectors. Okay. With M entries. And R1 cross N are row vectors with n <coughs> entries. Okay. And then what about algebra? If A and B are both matrices with the same number of rows and columns, okay, then C, the matrix which you get by adding A to B, is defined as follows. Well, first of all, let me say that this has entries B, I, J, just like in A above. In other words, if I put B equals and I change all the little A's to little B's, it would be the same. And this C is going to have entries, you guessed it, right? This is going to have entries C, I, J, as in A above. Okay. So C equals A plus B is defined <coughs> by C, I, J equals A, I, J plus B, I, J. So this is pretty easy, right? So every index i equals 1 up to m, and index j equals 1 up to n. Okay. So that's sort of the most obvious thing, isn't it? To define addition of two matrices. Okay. And because uh, real addition, addition, I'll say addition, 
of real numbers, addition, real numbers, <coughs> permutes. So that means you can do it either way around, right? Because the addition of real numbers commutes also <coughs> C is equal to B plus A. Because Bij plus Aij is the same as Aij plus Bij. So the commutativity of real numbers leads to the commutativity of matrix addition. Okay. Lots of coughing this morning. It's, it's, everybody had a drink before they come in. Uh, it's nice to hear silence. Right. I'm not criticizing. I've had a cough for two weeks, but anyway, it's uh, be nice if it was. Okay. Um, so matrix, uh, this should be a capital M. The matrix addition is also, well, first of all, it's. Um, Associative. Uh, so that simply means that um, if A, B, and C are matrices with the same numbers of rows and columns and rows, rows and columns, so M rows and N columns, um, then if I add A to B and then add C, okay, then that's the same as adding B to C and then adding A. Okay. And so there's no ambiguity in writing. A plus B plus C. In other words, I don't need to put these brackets in to indicate the order in which I do these, these additions. Okay. okay. Let me also say that um, if alpha is a real number um, and A is a real M by N matrix, um, uh, just like we've got here, right? then uh, alpha times A is defined to be alpha times A11 and alpha times A12 and alpha times A1N and alpha times A21, alpha times A22 and alpha times A2N and alpha times AM1. Hey, you've got the idea. Okay. So that's what scalar multiplication of a matrix is. Okay. Um, and then I'll say uh, also that clearly uh, the matrix, which I shall call zero, okay, which is a real n by n matrix, and this has all zero entries, right? As if you were populate an n by n matrix with every entry equals zero. Uh, clearly, this guy satisfies that <coughs> zero plus a is equal to is equal to a. Okay for all A is in the right set. Okay. So in other words, the addition of matrices is quite easy, quite straightforward, and it follows all the rules that you would expect in some sense. How could you define it differently? You couldn't really define it differently. 
Matrix multiplication, on the other hand, is a little more complicated. Okay, so matrix multiplication as opposed to matrix addition. Okay, so here I'm going to take positive integers I'm going to take positive inches and I call them um, uh, M, N, and P. I don't like using small O as an integer, so I've called it P. So if A belongs to R, M cross P, okay, and B belongs to R, P cross N, so this has m rows and p columns, and this has p rows and m n columns, right? Then a times b, which is called c, and again times I write with no symbol as we do usually, right? a times z equals c. This guy belongs to r m cross n, okay? is defined defined by Cij Cij well if I uh, Cij no I got, I'm not going to spit it in there I'll write it on the next board Cij is equal to the sum and this is the sum this is the symbol for summing things up we sum k equals one up to p of a i k that's the i kth entry of a times b k j that's the k j entry of b right and this i can also write as a i vector and i've made a very explicit definite um, thing here which i'll show you what i mean dotted with b j vector okay this is i equals one up to m and j equals 1 up to n okay and I'll put it on the next board okay. where I've also written the matrix A as its rows so A1 vector A2 vector A what's this? this is m right? <coughs> m vector I'm writing it like that so you can think this is a vector, right? And it just populates this row. Okay. And B, I correspondingly write as B1 vector. That's a column vector. And B2 vector up to Bn vector. And what's the point here? The point here is that the AI vectors are in R. 1 cross p, I reckon. They're column, they're row vectors, I'm sorry, with p entries. So a is in our m cross p, so that means it has m rows and p columns. And so if I write it in this form as vectors, then each of these vectors is of length p. And it's a row vector, so I write it like this. And correspondingly, bj is in our p cross 1. It's a column vector, and because b is in r p cross n, that means it has p rows and n columns. Well, you can see the n columns, but the p rows mean that each of these vectors is of length p, which is why I can write this as the dot product. I hope you all saw this rather important dot here of the ith row of a times the jth column of this dot product is perfectly well defined because these are both p vectors. Right? <coughs> if they're of different lengths, if one had 15 entries and the other had 17, then there's no way you can define the dot product. Or at least I've not defined it yet. <coughs> but if they're both p vectors, then I can define the dot product. So I'm just trying to get you to think in slightly different ways. This is a way of defining the product of two matrices. Okay, so you need the lengths to add up. 
So I'm defining matrix multiplication, just like I defined it, matrix addition above, for particular sizes. And if the sizes don't work, then you cannot define these operations. So you can't add a 3 by 2 matrix to a 9 by 7 matrix. That doesn't make sense right? in the way that I've just defined it. And similarly, you can't multiply two matrices for which the number of rows of this matrix is not equal, sorry, the number of columns of this matrix is not equal to the number of rows of that matrix. Okay, examples. So let's have some examples. First of all, if A is equal to 1, 2, 0, and minus 1, let's say. So this is in R1 cross 4, okay? And B is equal to, well, I've chosen 3, 0, 2, and minus 1. So this is in R4 cross 1, okay? Then <coughs> AB, which is C, is precisely... Sorry? Four. four. Somebody can do it really well, right? This is four. And this is in R1 cross 1, which we don't identify more specifically than it's a real number. <coughs> if you want to, put R1 cross 1. I don't mind. Okay. So this is just a dot product. <coughs> of two vectors of a row vector and a column vector. Right. That's example number one. Example number two, here we are. We have a matrix, one, one, two. Minus 1, 2, minus 1. So this is a 2 by 3 matrix. Okay. And if I take B is equal to the vector x, y, z, then this is sort of what we've already seen. C is equal to x plus y plus 2z. Right? And minus x plus 2y minus z. Okay. So that's what we've already seen, right? I've already written systems of equations essentially by using this before defining it. But I just point one thing out to you here that you can uh, perhaps not thought about. As well as thinking of this as being, you know, the dot product of this vector with this vector to give that vector, to give that scalar, I'm sorry. And then the dot product of this vector with this vector to give this scalar. You can also think of this as x times the first column of this matrix plus y times the second column of this matrix <coughs> plus z times the third column. So you can see x minus x, y plus 2y, 2z minus z. Right. So that's another way of thinking about it. Alternative, way, alternative ways are just sometimes useful, that's all. Okay, that's example number two. Example number three is just um, if I take, oh, I've taken the same matrix. One, one, two, right? So this, this is A, I'm sorry, this is A. And this is A again. Minus one, two, minus one. I must have liked that matrix when I was doing these examples. And B is equal to the matrix three minus one, minus 1 and 4, and 2, and minus 2. So the product of these matrices, A times B, is perfectly well defined. And this is equal to then C, the product AB equals C, is just the matrix. Well, I reckon it's 6, <coughs> minus 1, minus 7, and 11. Again, no cleverness in this choice of numbers. Okay, so that's matrix multiplication defined. So 
what are the properties, matrix multiplication. Okay. Is first of all, it is associative, and that means that A times B C, or if you mean what it means is multiply B by C first, and then multiply the on the front by A, is the same as multiplying A by B, A times B, and then multiplying on the back with C. And so, in other words, the brackets are not needed if you have products. It's also distributive. And that just means that A times, well, you do B plus C first, and then you multiply by A, that's equal to A, B, plus a c if all of these things are defined if the dimensions are correct that all these things are defined otherwise it's simply not defined right and this is uh, also true that a plus b multiplied by c is a c plus b c so matrix multiplication is, is distributive but it's not commutative. Okay, so it's not commutative. In other words, A times B is not equal to B times A in general. Okay, so you simply can't change the order of the multiplication arbitrarily. And you can see in all of these rules, I've not changed the order of here. Um, so you can also see from this that um, a b equals zero. So if this is m by p and this is p by n, this is m by n. This is the zero matrix of all zero entries. This does not imply that a equals zero or b equals zero. Okay, so this does not imply that. And you only need to think of very simple examples to realize that that is true. So if I take the non-zero matrix, this, and I take B as the non-zero matrix, this, then the product of these two matrices is zero. So neither of these matrices are themselves zero. Okay. Okay, very important matrix here is a matrix I call I, and so does everybody else. And I is this matrix, it has a one on the diagonal, and then it has zeros in the remaining rows and the remaining columns. And then it has a one, and then it has zeros. And I don't know how many zeros I should put in here, but this is a one and this is a zero. So this is just a matrix of which the diagonal entry, AII, as it were, is 1. And any off-diagonal entry, AIJ, where I and J are different, is 0. This is a square matrix, right? So this has to be a real, and in this case, I'm doing an n by n matrix, right? But did I so I'll put n by n? OK. This is a real n by n matrix. So it has n rows and n columns. So that's why I can do, do this dashed line. There is a very definite diagonal. OK. Um, this, this is the n by n identity, the identity matrix, okay, satisfies by the simple rules of a matrix, a multiplication I have above, A times I is equal to I times A for all A. And this is equal to A, I should say. <coughs> so there is a matrix which you can multiply something by, both on the 
on the right and on the left, which preserves the matrix, and that's this guy. If you just look at the rules of, of matrix uh, multiplication. Um, so because it's not commutative, multiplication is not commutative, great difficulty with these words. Because it's not commutative, then AB is pre-multiplication. Pre-multiplication of B by A or post-multiplication L of A by B. You can either say that I take A and I post-multiply by B, or I take B and I pre-multiply by A. Okay, those are different things. And the only thing I'll say finally, which I will do on this board, okay, is that clearly um, for A in R n cross n, so this is a square matrix again, as was i, and so on. For a square matrix, um, a times a is perfectly well defined, and this we write as a squared. That means a times a is matrix multiplication, okay, and this is a clearly a n by n matrix. It works for a square matrix for sure. And A times A times A, we've already seen, I don't need any brackets to say which I do first. This is A cubed, and this is in R N cross N as well. Okay. So these are unambiguous. In other words, I can write a to the 17, and that just means you take the matrix A, if it's square, and you multiply it by itself. 17 instances, 16 multiplications. Okay. Uh, we also define A to the power 0 to be this special matrix I that I've identified here. Okay. That's rather like saying X to the 0 is 1 in a scalar context. Right? So that if we have a polynomial, P of x is equal to A0 plus A1x plus, and I've done a kth degree polynomial here, AKx to the k, okay. So we saw these in the complex numbers introduction course, okay. So if you have a polynomial in a variable x, then you can necessarily easily define a polynomial in the matrix A. And the polynomial in A is the same coefficient A0, the <coughs> scalar, times the identity. That's A to the 0. <coughs> plus A1 times A. Plus A2 times A squared. Plus, plus AK times A to the power K. <coughs> and this is a matrix polynomial. Okay. Sorry, you guys have difficulties. Again, I'll hold it, push it up for a little bit. I'll bring it down. Right. So this is just defining what we do with matrices, right? We can add them, we can therefore subtract them, we can multiply them, and then the question arises about can we divide them, right? And so 
up and over here, a question uh, which arises arising throughout uh, mathematics, but much more generally than this, throughout science and engineering. Okay. is the following. If you've got a matrix A, which is square, <coughs> right? It has to be a square matrix. And then the question is, does there exist a matrix B <coughs> of the same dimension? It would have to be the same dimension to make, for this to make sense, such that A, B equals the identity matrix, and that's the same as B, A. Okay. So if you give me a matrix, is there a matrix B which I can multiply by A to get me to this identity matrix? Okay. Okay. Any such B is an inverse, okay. and we denote the inverse is a just to the power of minus one. Okay. So, for example, if you've got n equals two, and I start off with a generic matrix A, B, C, D, where these are just numbers then if this is A, we can see by construction that if I do the following, I put D here and A there, that is I swap these two over, and I negate these guys here, but don't move them, and I divide all of this by AD minus BC, so here's a scalar times a matrix, so we know what that means. That means you multiply every entry of the matrix by this number. Then you can see that this is AD minus BC. Oh, over AD minus BC, so the 1-1 one, one entry is 1. Okay. And DB minus BD, oh, that's 0. This is indeed the identity matrix. Okay. And so that means that this guy is an inverse. Okay, but you can note that this guy here exists, okay, if and on only if, if and only if, um, you can actually divide by AD minus BC. In other words, AD minus BC cannot be zero. Otherwise, this division is simply not defined. Okay. <coughs> okay. A inverse exists. Okay. If A inverse exists, means that A is, well, people use either the word invertible or the word that I prefer is non singular. Okay. That A to the inverse does not exist means A is singular. People less often say not invertible, but I shall use the word singular when a matrix A does not have an inverse. Okay. Okay. And now I get to the first um, proposition of my course, right? So here's a proposition, right? It just says that for A and B being real N 
by n matrices, okay, so that's n by n matrices of real numbers. Some of you might have realized already that I could have substituted this R with a C. And then I'd have matrices made up of complex entries. Or indeed, I can do that with lots of other so-called fields. We'll come to that in a second. So let's think about reals at the moment, because it makes life easy. For A, B, and reals, first of all, the first result is if A inverse exists, okay, then it is unique. Okay, so if a matrix has an inverse, then it can't have a different inverse. Um, the second result says that if you take A, B, and you try and invert it, so if A times B is perfectly well defined for two square matrices, and if you the invert this, this is equal to the inverse of B times the inverse of A, in that order. This is if A inverse and B inverse exist. Okay. This is rather important because it tells me that the, the product of invertible matrices is invertible. Right. The product of invertible matrices is invertible. And the third item I shall put in this proposition tells me that the inverse of the inverse, so I had to put a bracket in here to make this make sense clearly, the inverse of the inverse is the matrix A itself. Okay, so let's provide some proof of these things. So let's prove uh, u uniqueness, first of all. Suppose that B and C, which are different, okay, are both inverses of A, okay? <coughs> then I just say by associativity, then it must be true that B A C equals B A C, of course. <coughs> but then I can put brackets in wherever I wish. And if I put brackets around A and C, and I put brackets around B times A, okay. Well, hang on a second. B is an inverse of A, so B times A is the identity matrix. And C is an inverse of A, so A times C is the identity matrix. And so this tells me that B is equal to C, okay, because of this. <coughs> so in other words, if B and C are both inverses, then they're actually the same. I didn't have to put in this logic not equal to here, but I'm just trying to make it completely Explicit for those of you a little less, you know, a little less sure about this. If I have b comma c, which are both inverses, then this argument still works. Right? I'm just explicitly saying to make it sound a little more kosher for you that if they're different, then they can't be different. They have to be the same. Okay, two um, uh, is I'm going to. Um, ask you to see the uh, problem sheet. because This is on the problem sheet. So you can think about this. Proving my proposition number two. And three just says that, well, A inverse times A is equal to the identity is equal to A times A inverse. So by the first proposition, A is equal to A inverse inverse. In other words, the inverse of this matrix is A. 
Amin. Aya. Okay, so that finishes my uh, proposition. I guess one of the reasons that people think about inverses, if A inverse exists, okay, then the solution X in R N cross 1 okay, of A times X equals B, where B is in R N cross 1. So in other words, X and V are both N column vectors, okay, is X is equal to A inverse times B. <coughs> I mean, this is a slightly trivial statement, but it just sometimes people like to say this. So the question of whether this in inverse exists relates to whether there are is a unique solution x of a system of equations. Well, yesterday we looked at systems of equations, and we looked at whether there were what kinds of solutions there were. So in the first example I gave you, there was a unique solution. So in that situation, you would expect that I could have written down a matrix inverse. Okay, um, I'll come over here. Oh, I've only got a, a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not really worth me um, starting uh, on the next bit just a couple of minutes so I'll I'll stop there today it's